Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I have a surprisingly useful lemma for you all today. Uh, this is called the isogonal line lemma. And I first learned about it around probably a little over a month ago, and I've already used it about five times. And I've seen other posters on uh, the Art of Problem Solving Forum use it even more than that. Um, so if you'd like to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. All right, so I'm going to go over the solution. Uh, so we have five points, A, B, C, D, and E, uh, such that angle B, A, C is equal to angle E, A, D. And C and D are both inside angle B, A, E. That's just to make the problem nice. Uh, let B, D intersect uh, C, E at F. And let B, C intersect D, E at G. And we want to show that angle B, A, F is equal to angle E, A, G. So when I first solved this problem, uh, my solution was a little messier using trigonometry, but then I found a really nice solution um, by the poster um, Jean-Louis Aimé. So he's a retired professor from France, and he posts a lot of his work on a, a page on his website. So I'm gonna, um, in the description of the video, I'm gonna post a link to that, okay? Um, so this is his proof. Um, and what it does is um, it approaches it from a different angle. Um, instead of showing that angle BAF is equal to angle EAG, I'm going to let F prime be the point so that BAF prime is equal to EAG. And then I'm going to show that EF prime and C are collinear. Okay. So let F prime be the point on BD such that BAF prime is equal to angle EAG. Okay, uh, so we don't know that F prime yet lies on EC, and that's what we're trying to prove. And if we could do that, it would solve the problem. And the reason that uh, we're approaching it from this angle is that now there's a nice symmetry to the figure. So um, if you look at the angle bisector of BAE, um, a, the lines A, B, and A, E are symmetric with respect to that angle bisector. Uh, the lines AC and AD are symmetric with respect to it, and the lines AF prime and AG are also symmetric with respect to, the, to it. So we're going to sort of take advantage of that symmetry here. Um, so I'm going to start by uh, extending BG to meet AE at a point. So let BG meet AE at point H. Um, and now what I'm going to do is so some of you um, who are familiar with cross ratios might know that the cross ratio is really a function of, of four lines. So uh, if we look at the lines A, B, A, C, A, G, and A, H, that um, pair of four lines has a cross ratio. So I've kind of on my channel only spoken about the cross ratio of four points. But you can also think about it as being a cross ratio of those four lines, uh, because if you take any other line and you intersect it um, in those four lines at four points, the cross ratio would have to be the same. So I'm going to use that here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reflect these four points, B, C, G, and H, across the angle bisector of A. So, and I'm going to let them be B prime, C prime, G prime, and H prime. Okay. And those reflections of these four points across the angle bisector, uh, using that symmetry, they're going to lie on the lines AE, um, AD, AF prime, and AB. Um, I think that should be right. So I am going to um, write this out. So B prime, C prime, G prime, and H prime uh, by symmetry would lie on the lines AE, AD, AF prime and AB. Uh, that's because angle BAC is equal to angle EAD and angle BAF prime is equal to angle EAG. So if we reflect across the angle bisector of BAE, we'd have to get that this is true. So I'm going to draw those four points, B, C prime, B prime, C prime, G prime, and H prime. Okay. And they all have to lie on those lines that I mentioned, AE, AD, AF prime and AB. All right. 
And now um, we can use um, symmetry here. So if you look at the four points B, C, G, and H, and you look at the distances between them, it has to be the same as the distances between B prime, C prime, G prime, and H prime, okay? Um, because by symmetry, the all four points here are, are a reflection of all four points here. And so that means that the cross ratio of those four points has to be the same. Uh, so I'm going to write this out. So by symmetry, the cross ratio B, G, C, H has to be the same as the cross ratio B prime, G prime, C prime, H prime. Okay. And so that's the whole reason why I constructed those four points. Um, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to project them through point A onto this line BD. Uh, so in order to do that, I'm going to extend BD uh, to meet AH at a point. So I'm going to let it meet AH at a point F. And, or actually I'm going to call it J. And if you um, project these four points through A onto line BJ, um, you get another cross ratio. So B would go to point J, uh, G prime would go to point F prime, uh, C prime would go to point D, and H prime would go to point B. Okay, so now that we have this cross ratio is equal to this cross ratio, I'm going to erase points B prime, G prime, C prime, and H prime. Because uh, the whole reason that I constructed them was to prove that this cross ratio would equal this cross ratio. Okay, so I just erased them. All right, so now there's a certain trick with cross ratios where um, if you have one cross ratio and you swap um, the two letters um, outside the semicolons, and then you swap the pairs within the semicolons, it's still the same thing. So this cross ratio should be equal to B, D, um, semicolon, F prime J. So I'm going to actually show a short proof of that here, but it's a good fact to just memorize. Um, so here's the proof of that fact. So first I'm going to write out the definition of this cross ratio. Okay, so J F prime D B. Um, you look at what is the ratio D divides segment J F prime into, that's J D over D F prime. And then you multiply it by the, the flip of the other ratio. So you multiply it by BF prime over BJ. Okay. And now we can rewrite this. We can move BF prime to this fraction and JD to the other fraction. So algebraically, this is the same as uh, BF prime over DF prime times JD over BJ. And now we can look at this expression and it's easy to see that that is equal to the cross ratio B, D, F prime, J. Because this is the ratio that F prime divides B, D into. And this is the reciprocal of the ratio J divides B, D into. So I just memorized this fact that um, this is equal to this. But here's the algebraic proof right here. Okay. And the reason why I did that is because now... I want to project through point E, and you'll see why this transformation is useful. Okay, so I'm going to take these four points, B, D, F prime, and J, and I'm going to project them through E back onto the line BH. Um, so B stays at B, uh, D would go to point G, F prime, we're not sure yet where it goes, and J goes to H. Okay. So this cross ratio B, D, F prime, J uh, is equal to B, um, G, because uh, point B goes to point G. And then F prime, I don't know yet where that goes, so I'm just going to put E, F prime intersect B, H, and then point J goes to point H. All right, so we've almost solved the problem here. Um, so we can use transitivity. So this original cross ratio uh, has to equal this, which has to equal this, which is equal to this cross ratio. Um, so we've essentially found the initial uh, cross ratio in terms of itself. Um, so the points B, G, and H are the same in these two expressions. Um, 
So therefore, it's not hard to show that C has to be this intersection point. And that's exactly what we wanted to show. So we wanted to show that E, F prime, and C are collinear. Okay? So since three out of the four points on these two are the same, that means that we have to have, I'm going to make a little more room, we have to have C is equal to the intersection of E, F prime, and B, H. So essentially, E, F prime, and C uh, have to be collinear. Um, so I'm going to draw in that segment. But if, if those three points are collinear, then that means F prime is actually F from the original problem. So F prime is equal to F. And so angle BAF um, has to equal angle EAG. And that's exactly what we want to show. Uh, so I feel like this is a really nice proof. Um, so check out um, the link with um, jean Luis's proof. And what's interesting is this is actually a special case of a more general theorem um, called the dual Desargues involution theorem. So this is the only special case that I've really used in solving problems. Um, but I've seen on the Art of Problem Solving Forum, a lot of people talk about this, um, the dual Desargues involution theorem. And so I'm going to post a link also to that, which has a sort of more general theorem that this is a special case of. So if you like this problem, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thanks, everyone.